uh, strategic partners. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Amsterdam, and I would like to tell you about troubles based meta analysis, a way of combining multiple methods of publication based adjustment and the Roma R package that implements the methodology. First, I will tell you about, a, about an example that compares research application reports and meta analysis, and I will use it to highlight the problems and challenges of uh, adjusting for publication bias. Then I will tell you a bit more about different ways of adjusting for publication bias, how we can combine them with Bayesian model averaging. And lastly, I will tell you more about the package implementation and functionalities. So the example, Quarman and colleagues in 2020 published a paper that looked at 15 different meta analysis and a risk replication report that tried to replicate the main, uh, main study of, from each of the analysis. And under some other assumptions, you would expect that the research replication report should provide the best possible estimate of the true effect size and that the meta analytic estimates of the original studies should converge to it. Uh, the original meta analysis were of, comp of different sizes and they range from 15 to around 300 studies. And uh, if you look at the original effect size estimates based on the published studies, you can see a wide variety of effects. And uh, since this is a doctoral publication bias, Unsurprisingly, you see that the estimates from registered replication reports were much smaller than the original effects estimate based on meta-analysis. So this large discrepancy is uh, by many attributed the publication bias. And uh, one way that you can use this example is to see how well would the different publication bias adjusted met methods adjust for the publication bias and provide estimates closer to the research replication report estimates. So publication bias adjustment is a topic that has been here for many decades, and there have been different methods implemented and developed that try, uh, try to adjust for it. I like to differentiate them in two different camps. One camp are methods that adjust for relationship between standard errors and effect sizes, for example, term film, bad piece, or indigenous king. And the second groups are selection modes of p-values that uh, try to adjust for publication bias operating on p-values. For example, 3 and 4 PSM, A1, AK2, P curve, P uniform. So I will just go to something about PET piece and 3 PSM. So PET piece is a conditional meta regression estimator that tries to adjust for relation between effect size and standard errors or standard error squares. And uh, the idea is if there is no relationship between effect size and standard errors in, uh, that happens when there's no publication selection bias, then if you fit a regre meta regression estimator, the intercept should correspond to the true effect size. However, if there is a publication best selection, then you see a, a higher number of so small studies with large standard errors and overestimate effect size estimate, and then fitting either bad model or piece model should provide a much better effect size estimate. The selection models on the other hand extend the traditional random effect or mixed uh, or fixed effect mathematic model with mean parameter mu, the heterogeneity parameter tau, and publication best weights omega. Here, for example, we use a step weight function that specifies different uh, publication bias probabilities for different p-value intervals. Here, we can fix uh, the relative publication probability of significant studies to one, and we can estimate the relative publication probabilities of the marginal significant studies or non-significant studies. As a result, we obtain a different likelihood function. So the f would be the unweighted likelihood function, while the fw is the weight likelihood function that takes the different publication probabilities at different p-value intervals into account. Uh, why this uh, approach is interesting? Well, if you look at the 1 million published uh, set statistic uh, on Medline, you can see a very similar shape that shows two very uh, large discontinuities, maybe accidentally at the alpha 0.05. So if you use those two uh, very popular methods, and uh, in the example of Warren, we can see the original effect size estimate in red, the research replication report estimates in blue, and then the black circles that are pet piece and black triangles that are 3 PSM. And in some cases, all of them will provide the same estimate. In some cases, 3 PSM is better than pet piece. And in other cases, pet piece is better than 3 PSM. The problem is, a priori, it's hard to tell which of the estimates is better. So, the question is, how should you base your inference, especially if the methods disagree on the conclusions? So we argue that you shouldn't show, uh, you shouldn't base the inference on a single model. Instead, 
you should use robust Bayesian meta-analysis and Bayesian model averaging to base the inference of multiple models simultaneously. So instead of selecting a single model, you, select, you specify all of the models, you fit them, and you base your inference proportionately on how well the different models predicted the data. Then we use space factors to quantify the evidence in favor of the presence or absence of either the effect, heterogeneity, or publication bounds. You can use prior distribution to regularize the estimate and incorporate prior knowledge, and use Bayesian evidence updating uh, that's independent of the sampling plan. So in an overview, uh, the Bayesian model averaging works something like this. You have different hypotheses about the data that are represented by the different demons, and some of the and demons uh, specified hypothesis, for example, this demon says so uh, the treatment works, so the alternative hypothesis is true, or there is no effect, the my hypothesis is true. And you have kind of different assumptions about heterogeneity, the fixed and random effect models, or different assumptions about presence or absence of the publication bias. So you specify all of those different hypotheses by the different models in your ensemble. You feed the models with the data, and the models that predict the data best will grow in uh, and their voice will be heard much more. So if the model predicts the data well, it, uh, you, will, you will base the inference much more often on it and much more strongly. So uh, how we split the ensemble, then you, for example, when obtain the model average estimate, you can look at the different components in a way that model specify our absence or presence of the effect. So you can split the prior model probabilities equally across the, those, those two model pairs then against equally across models, assuming presence or absence of the heterogeneity, and then the publication does. So at the end, you end up with eight different model types that specifying all the possible complications or combinations of either the presence or absence of the effect, heterogeneity, and publication does. So each of the model or each of the model types ends up with the same prior model probability. But as I said previously, there are different ways how to adjust for publication does. So in our illustration of demon, this one demon can be represented in many ways. So what we do, well, it just turtles all the way down. We just specify more models that represent this one demon. Here, you can specify, for example, the PED model as one way of adjusting for publication bias, the piece model, or different uh, weight functions. For example, one-sided uh, selection on one-sided p-values on, on the significant level, or selection on marginally significant and significant p-values on the, with the two-sided p-values and all different ways. So if you look across all of the different uh, publication best adjustment methods that we specify in the robust Bayesian meta-analysis, we use the PET and PEACE uh, publica uh, publication adjustment models to adjust for between FX size and standard errors. And we specify six different weight functions that specify different assumptions about the different uh, possible ways publication might operate on p-values. So, and all of those uh, specification cover approximately the pet piece, 3PSM, 4PSM, AK1, and AK2 models. So if you look back uh, to our example, we can see that in some cases, all of the methods provide still the same estimate. In other cases, uh, the ROBMA provides an estimate that's uh, somewhere between the pet piece and 3PSM. And in different cases, uh, we can obtain, again, estimate that's somewhere in between, but uh, it's uh, not greater than one of those methods. That just signifies that uh, we are still doing statistics, not magic, and uh, we cannot uh, provide the best, uh, the correct answers all the time. Nonetheless, uh, in simulation studies that uh, are linked at the end of the, uh, of the presentation, you can see that in majority of cases, uh, the Bayesian model averaging provides uh, the best possible results. So we, to make this uh, methodology available to the practitioners, we implemented it in the Robma R package. And the package uses MC estimation uh, with checks using the run checks R package, and then computes the marginal effects at the bridge sampling R package. And the most things that the Robma R package does is the model specification, some plotting summary function that I will show you in a second, and uh, additional auxiliary stuff. So the Robma R package, you can, uh, use it to, to, to specify the default ensemble. You just specify the FX size and standard errors. So for example, here on the infamous uh, BEMS 2011 data set, you fit the model just with a single simple call and you can use a summary function to obtain some default summary of the model. Here, 
you can see that in the first summer table, you see information about the whole model ensemble, and you see that you specify 36 models, 18 of which assume presence of the effect, 18 presence of the heterogeneity, and 32 presence of the publication bias. The parameter probabilities are equal across the component, and you see the post probabilities. You can also quantify the evidence with the conclusion based factors, and you see that uh, there is uh, very weak evidence for the absence of the effect, moderate evidence for the absence of heterogeneity, and strong evidence for the presence of publication bias. And then, of course, you see the model average estimates for the mean and uh, heterogeneity parameter, and then the publication bias uh, relative publication bias probabilities and pet and piece estimates. So, moreover, the package uh, provides additional summaries. For example, you can look at the summary of the initial models that shows you the prior distribution for the effect, heterogeneity, and publication bias, the prior model properties of each of the individual models, marginal likelihoods, posterior properties, and inclusion fa base factors for each of the models. You can also look at the MCMC diagnostics of the individual models that show a summary of uh, the MCMC error. Uh, minimum uh, effective sample size and maximum R head from each of the models to verify that the models were fitted properly. And you can also look at the estimates from the individual models. So here I'm just showing a print of the last three models that are specified, and you can see the model specification, the parameter estimates, and etc. So even if you don't want to do the patient model averaging and you want to look at the different at the individual models, you can look at the, uh, at the estimates from the individual models. Then uh, the uh, package also provides plotting functions. So for example, you can plot uh, the model average uh, mean estimate where the spikes correspond uh, to the probability of models assuming absence of the effect. So the effect size is zero. And then the slab corresponds to the density of models assuming uh, presence of the effect. Uh, the functions are also implemented in ggplot. So if you are uh, fans of ggplot, you can use those. Or you can also look at the prior and posterior distribution, for example, here for the tau estimate, assuming presence of the effect, and many other combinations. Uh, the package allows multiple different specifications, and uh, you can modify basically everything about the ensemble. For example, you can change the prior distribution for the effect and specify a truncated normal distribution that specifies a hypothesis of small effect sizes, that means zero, standard deviation of 0.3. Uh, force to the interval of zero to infinity, or you can specify different ways uh, of adjusting for publication bias. Here you can specify only prior distribution that specify the pet and piece uh, models that uh, adjust for publication bias. I, if you want to see more uh, different specifications and uh, customization, I recommend to check the variants of the package that are on CRM. We also implemented the R package in JS with the graphic user interface. And uh, the JEST implementation allows you to set basically all of those customization also in JEST, specify the models with different prior distributions. And then uh, you can create different summaries for the inferences, different figures. Here you can see again the model average mean effect size estimate and also the model average weight function estimate across all selection models. So you know, just to sum up uh, something about uh, the rules patient meta analysis. It can incorporate uncertainty about the selected model with Bayesian model averaging. So you don't have to base the inference on any single publication that's adjustment model, but on all of them and how well they predict the data. It can, we can provide evidence for either the null or alternative hypothesis. It has better performance with small sample sizes, has the capacity to incorporate expert knowledge, and has the potential for sequential updating of evidence. On the other side, there are some disadvantages. For example, it's slow, it requires MCMC sampling, and it can also fail under strong p-hacking. So thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you want to learn more about the package, you can also uh, can either look at the CRN where the package is released or my GitHub page where you can also submit a feature request or bug reports and uh, look at the JASP. There are some references uh, to the papers that we have written that uh, outline the methodology in more detail and tell more about the model specification or simulation studies that uh, we further conducted to verify the methodology. Thank you very much and uh, looking forward to see you in discussion.